Hey everyone, this week we will be going over some college baseball stuff in terms of Division 1 and I'm going to show you how to pull a, an entire season of data for every D1 program. So we're going to get started. Um, quickly, make sure that you, you may have Baseball R already installed. Make sure you reinstall it so you have the most updated version again. Dev tools, install GitHub, build Petty Baseball R. I'll show you while that's running, and that way I can kind of explain what else is going on and kind of like the semantics of this episode. So, what we're going to do is we're going to download this GitHub repo. We're going to get that from Build Petty, make sure it's updated. Um, I just say three to update none of the packages, but that stuff will run. Um, essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to get that. And then Bill Petty has a function called school ID lookup, which allows you to get the school ID and that kind of information. So um, what we're going to do is pull from d1baseball.com there, um, every team that's listed. And then we're going to adjust those team names to make sure they match that string pull from the school ID lookup in Bill Petty's package. That way we can get every team possible. All right, so the loading is, in, is installed and everything is up to date. So now we'll just call our two libraries, which are Baseball R and Tidyverse. And from the Tidyverse, we'll be using the dplyr package and the stringer package mostly. Now I forgot to add another package, which is rvest, to make sure you have that called as well so you can read those um, teams. So we're going to call it D1 data frame, call it D1, read HTML, and it will be uh, d1baseball.com slash teams. And let's call the HTML nodes, which is simply just team pulling from the d1baseball.com site and then the html text because we want the text of each team and then we want to put that into a data frame so we'll call it data frame and then we don't want our strings to be factors so we'll say string is factors equals false then since that poll will return a column name of a period we'll change the column name so column names d1 first element and we'll say school and lastly we will change that to remove the trailing and leading white spaces we'll use string squish so that way when we do pull these teams or we look them up it will be exact so we'll run all this and we see that we have a data frame of all the D1 schools as listed on D1Baseball.com. Now I went ahead and added this kind of code. That way um, there are a lot of teams that need to have their um, strings adjusted. So essentially what I'm going to show you is kind of that, that process. So essentially what I do is I'll call from the stringer package, string replace call D1 school and then change those names. So this was the original name. So UT Rio Grande Valley, change it to UTRGV. That way when we do the school ID lookup, it will correctly match that school. Things like Western Illinois, so Western ILL period. Uh, that's pretty common for most of the Illinois schools. Um, Kentucky has changed to KY period. So things along those lines and then I change some specific ones to match because um, when you do the string replace there might be a problem in getting those names to remain intact so like if I replace Connecticut with Yukon then Central Connecticut State would change to Central Yukon State and that's not what you want and then Southern U if I replace Southern with Southern U um, that would change a lot of schools that have Southern in their name. And it would say, you know, like instead of saying Southern Illinois, it'd be Southern New Illinois. So I'll run all these. 
just to get all the string replaces in there and we can kind of see so like Yukon's replaced um, we'll go to another specific one like Southern Southern U this is what so when we use that school ID look lookup in the baseball R package we can get extract the correct school now the above code will be on my github page which I will leave a link in the description so that way you don't have to kind of go through all the code and see what teams need replacing. That way you have a quicker way of doing it. So next we're going to get the list of each school. So we're going to just call a list called D1 list. Now we're going to create a for loop. So we'll say for I in one to the number of rows in D1. D1 list. I and we'll call baseball R which I mean we don't have to call it since we already have it in our but the school ID lookup that's the crucial function here d1 that school I so it goes through each of those and then I'll add some dplyr code so we'll say filter year equals 2020 and then we want to get the first result so We'll call slice and we'll get that first result only. Um, again, make sure you reinstall that baseball R package. Otherwise, you won't be able to get that year 2020 filter. And so I'll run this. It will take some time. We have our list and we'll give it gives a tibble of one row and six columns now however there are some that may pop off as a little unusual so i'll give one example so let's say you were looking up marshall and again we'll filter by year 2020. so when we look it up franklin and marshall is actually the first team that pops up so based on that code Franklin and Marshall is actually in the D1 list right now. So we're going to change that. So we're just going to go through specific instances. So Marshall is at position 114. So we'll change school ID lookup. Change that to Marshall. And again, filter. Year equals 2020 and then slice this time we'll get the second element and then we'll copy and paste and there's three other programs that do something similar so there's Marshall Miami so between there's a Miami Florida and a Miami Ohio so we're going to pull for Miami Miami Ohio at position 153 we're going to pull Miami, Ohio instead of Miami, Florida. And then Pacific, which brings up teams like Azusa Pacific, um, a few others. This was this is the weird one where it was the fourth one in the positioning. And that is element 285. And then element 287 is Portland because it, it, the original one comes up as Concordia Portland first. So we'll run these and they will get replaced properly. And then we'll put all of them into a data frame by calling, we'll say D1 IDs, call the plier package, LD ply, D1 list, data frame. Lastly, we will, to save this IDs, we'll say, we'll call a write CSV, D1 IDs, and we'll say D1 school IDs 2020.csv, and we don't want row names, so row names equals false. And now that's in our working directory which is for me it's documents whatever it is for you this is where the good part comes in that pulls all that data so we'll create two lists batting and pitching
and we will say for i in 1 to n row, this time d1 ids, this time we'll do a little, something a little bit different. We'll do a try catch function, which essentially means if there's no data available, it just goes to the next uh, school ID. So there's some teams, I know there's some Ivy League teams that haven't played. They will start playing this weekend um, in the last week of February. And so nothing will appear because there's nothing there as of this time. But if you run this code at a later time, it should be there at that point. So we'll do the NCAA scrape function in Bill Petty's uh, baseball R package, which scrapes hitting and pitching data. So we'll say D1 school ID I, and then that gives us the year. So D1 IDs year I, you could also put 2020. The reason why I did that is, you know, maybe in the future someone could pull multiple years. And that way that goes through I as well. And then we'll say type is batting. And we'll copy and paste this right under it. And we'll change this to pitching. as well as we will change this to pitching. Lastly, we will overwrite that error. So again, for those Ivy League teams that have yet to play this season, we'll say error equals function E, call those squiggly brackets, which essentially means just if it's an error, just go to the next team ID and run the code. So again, um, since I have a faster machine, um, I don't need system sleep, but if, say, your machine is running on 4 gigs of RAM or doesn't have a strong uh, CPU, I highly recommend adding in a system sleep to run through all this code. Now we're going to call the batting and pitching into a data frame. So. Again, we'll call ldply from the plier package. We'll say batting data frame for D1 bat, and then same goes for D1 pitch. So D1 pitch, pitching data frame. Now this pulls all, all player records. You can see there's a lot of observations, but once we kind of bog that down we will get that taken care of so we're going to replace all the NAs with zero so we'll say is dot NA D1 bat and we'll say zero same goes for pitching D1 pitch D1 pitch as well as we're going to Add columns, so say D1 bat PA, and so we'll create a plate appearances column. We'll say at bats, walks, hit by pitches, sacrifice hits, and sacrifice flies. To get those plate appearances and then we'll create an OPS column so OPS on baseball slugging so D1 bat on base percentage to D1 bat slugging percentage so we will run all of this it will give you these kind of warning messages don't worry about it Lastly, we want to remove totals um, that have less than zero, or I should say zero, plate appearances slash batter space. So we will filter by plate appearances, and then we want to remove those rows that have either totals or opponent totals. So we'll do a G repel, but the opposite, so we'll put an exclamation point in front of it. Say totals, 
and then we want to pull it from player. So we'll have that for D1 hitting, and then this for D1 pitching as well. Except we'll change PA to batters faced. So D1 pitch. And we'll say batters face. And so we'll run this as well. And you can see the observations kind of bogged down a little bit. So this is what it looks like. It'll have the year, school, conference, division, jersey, player, and then a bunch of stats, as well as Bill Petty added in their player URL and their player ID. So what we can do next is throw it into a database. So we're going to say R. We'll say we'll call in our library our SQLite and then the DBI package to put this into a database. So call both of those. Then we will connect it. So again, DB connect. And we'll say what we want to connect an SQLite database. And we'll call this D1 data SQLite. And then we'll write to our database, so db write table. Our connection is that db that we just created. Our name for this one is, we'll say d1 hitting, so d1 underscore hitting, d1 bat, overwrite equals true. That way, for future reference, if you want to pull d1 data at a later date, it'll overwrite that previous data. And then same goes for hitting, except we'll, or pitching, I should say, except we'll do D1 pitching. And so we'll get those da data tables into that SQLite database. So again, for reference, we will call a query. So we'll again call this uh, D1 bat. We'll say db get query. Our connection is the db. And then our statement is we'll say select all observations from d1 underscore hitting. Which then should pull all of that d1 data into a data frame. It's good to go. Now let's do a basic query just to make sure it works. So we'll say you want bat filter PA is greater than or equal to 20. And we want the top five players in OPS. So there's a couple ways of doing this. This is the way I'll do it. So say a range descending OPS and then we'll say slice and we'll select the first five rows which are the top five so nick gonzalez of at least 20 pas has an ops of 1970 then there's acta loach texas a&m jason hitchman tanner craig and ben wagner are the top five players in ops Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. Um, tune in next week. We'll be going over a little bit more stuff uh, along these lines. Um, so stay tuned and uh, feel free to, again, leave a comment in the comment section for anything you want to see or anything you want me to help teach you.